Carl here from Games, Brains of Banging Life, and it's time for another episode of The Dead Pit. This is where our illustrious guest chooses five things from the world of gaming, horror, heavy metal, and rock that grinds his or her gears and sends them to a pit of the undead, where they will be ripped apart, devoured, and hopefully never seen again. Our guest this time, Sean Nolan of Punk Rock Band, Sean Nolan and the Heartmakers. I'm sure you get this all the time, Sean, but how difficult it is to not say Sean Nolan the Heartbreakers every single it's time. Very, <laughs> it's very, very difficult. Uh, we've had we've had uh, venues and promoters put Heartbreakers on the bill of stuff, and I always have to tell them, "Can you please change it? Please change it." You know, we're not trying to blatantly rip off. Tom Petty, you know. <laughs> Not even that as well, but heartbreakers, heartmakers, the, the two very it's, different. Yeah. <laughs> right, and a heartmaker isn't even really a word. Yes, so. yes. But anyway, um, it's a pleasure to speak with you, Sean. How, how are you doing? You too. Uh, I'm doing all right. It's a, you know, weird, strange world that mm. we live in. You know, it's, uh, it's like the rug got pulled out from beneath us, and now we're all left kind of trying to figure it out. So. Dizzy. And how have yeah. you been holding up then throughout 2020s? Well, like uh, September now, this has been ongoing really since, say, February, March. And you're in New York, Brooklyn, right? Yeah, that's right. So, yeah. like, that was ground zero to a degree in relation to COVID when it first Yeah. Started. Yeah, it was, it was pretty nuts. I would, uh, you know, take bike rides, go through Central Park, and they had like a field hospital over there where you could see like all the white tents and stuff, and very surreal. Uh, when it when things first started shutting down, I remember just leaving my apartment and uh, walking a block or two away. It was just, it was like the end of the world. Everyone was kind of panicked. Everything was shuttered, nothing was open. The grocery stores, the shelves were gone. For some strange reason, you couldn't find toilet paper anywhere, which didn't make any sense to me. I never understood that. Logically, it didn't make any sense. It's like, are people going more than they did before? It doesn't, it doesn't, that's not how that works. I would think like there'd be less soup, but instead there was like plenty of soup, no toilet paper. <laughs> so, but it was very, very, uh, very strange. And it's still like, it feels more normal outside, but still not quite, not quite there yet. Have you managed to kind of keep positive and in a good frame of mind throughout the year? Uh, it's kind of, you know, one day at a time. Uh, you know, at the, at the start, it would be, I would feel all right until like around four or five o'clock, all of a sudden it would be like doom and gloom. You know, I don't know why that time of the day, but, um, but yeah, it's weird because the days blur into each other. You kind of make your own schedule you've got your own structure going on um which is good and it's bad because after a while uh, there was a couple weeks ago i had a moment where i everybody jokes around about like i don't know what day it is anymore and i had a moment where on my own i panicked a little bit because somebody had told me it was wednesday or something and i thought it was monday and when I tried to retrace my steps, I couldn't figure it out. I, I, I couldn't, I full on had no idea how I had arrived at Wednesday. Like you've lost and so it was days. kind of alarming. Yeah. Like I lost two days. I don't know what happened. It wasn't like I wasn't out drinking. I wasn't doing anything. I, I, I just totally, I don't know, very strange, super mm. weird. Okay, okay. How is it over there? Um. Well, it's not been brilliant, to be honest. It's not been great. The UK hasn't exactly <laughs> right. been a, a leader in the in the European um, way of dealing with uh, the coronavirus difference uh, in government and stuff. And um, but yeah, similar. We never really had like a, a big on lockdown. You know, we had a lot of countries fully closed down. We never really had that to, in the same way. Yeah. Um, so, but right now it's kind of like. Again, similar to what you're saying, things kind of are normal, so to speak, but with all this extra stuff, you know, mask wearing, social distancing. Mm -hmm. um, and now today, as of today, we've got the rule of six. And the rule of six is no okay. more than six people in a group outside work. Yeah, I think that, like I think that. makes sense. Yeah. 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 So just That's like smart. everyone, uh, just like every country, it seems, it's like, we're all just waiting to see what happens next. Yeah. And it's weird, like, 
over here there's like you know restaurants are all opening back up for the most part and like the parks are you know busy and it makes me nervous like i i you know before all this i was uh you know worked in at a bar i was a bar manager at a place and uh you know i've had a couple interviews to get back in but but honestly i i don't know how comfortable i feel doing that you know it's like to spend eight hours or so you know you gotta clear glassware and dirty napkins from people and I, i just it doesn't seem worth the risk honestly it's, it's really kind of a gamble hard it's really hard to call it's without really knowing what each day is going to yeah. bring i don't really know how you can make massive decisions in life at the moment anyway yeah it seems like the smartest thing to do is to just kind of still hunker down be safe and pause and like don't rush into anything because it's like the last thing you want to do you know because from what we understand like you could spread this virus to people without even knowing you have it yeah. i mean the last thing you want is like i don't know if you've heard these people had a gender reveal party in california oh, yeah and like burned half the country down essentially yeah i mean it's like it's nuts and so i mean on a smaller scale i mean you think about you know they did a stupid thing just having a party and you know like a bunch of people have died people have lost their homes And you think like, well, you know, I could go hang out with my friends, but if I then got like, you know, my mom sick or like my grandmother sick or like my pregnant sister sick or whatever, it's not worth it. Mm. It's not worth like being around a bunch of people if you're gonna get somebody sick and they could, you know, die from it. Just like it's not worth it to shoot off pyrotechnics in California and burn half the country down. (laughs) I mean, it's not half the country obviously, but it's California. Oregon and I don't know a bunch of other places but it's uh, stupid it's just not worth it no, it's crazy you're not, you're not wrong you're not wrong right your first nomination then for the dead pit are you much of a gamer do you watch a lot of horror any horror and do you listen yeah. to much music yes uh, all of the above I'm I'm weird so the thing is I'm weird with um, I say with gaming I'm kind of across the board I, I mean obviously I, I grew up primarily in the, the, you know, 90s, throughout the 90s, late 80s, in the 90s. And um, so, you know, Nintendo, Sega, up until now, where I have, like, a PS4 and a mm. Switch. Um, so I, I play all sorts of different games. I haven't quite gotten into, like, too many first-person shooters. Okay. And the weird thing is with horror, with horror stuff, I'm a big fan of horror fiction and a big fan of, of um, uh, like, supernatural horror. I don't particularly care for slashers or like um, any sort of. I don't love gruesome stuff. Okay. Um, I mean, there there are there are exceptions. Um, I like the suspense, but uh, I guess as far as games, like my first thing, because I was thinking about this yesterday, today, like what uh, could I totally be rid of and be happy that I think should just be gone forever. And I feel like um, I've been playing this game called uh, Octopath Traveler. And it's out for the Switch, I think PC. And it's um, made by like the Final Fantasy people, I think. Okay. So uh, I have this small dog that's (laughs) very busy. (laughs) Um, But the the whole idea of of grinding in order to be able to move forward, it's kind of like you know, like where um, in order to progress, like I have to fight a bunch of, a ton of battles in order to level up my character just so that I even stand a chance. Which like, if it's done well, it can be enjoyable. Uh, like in an in Octopath Traveler, like sometimes I'm enjoying it and it's fun. Um, but honestly, forget it. Like just get, re- because, because it's like, it interrupts the story. I started playing like um, an X Men. What is it called? Uh, it's like X Men Alliance or Marvel Alliance or something that came out for the Switch. And again, it's sort of like a, a dungeon crawler, um, but you have to level up your characters. You can't just progress and work your way through. And so I got to a point where I was like, 
I ended up at like some boss fight. And I was like, I can't even, like, I can't even come close. Like he's destroying me. And I didn't cut corners. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like I followed the path and I you... did the thing. And I didn't cut corners and I can't even. And it's not like, you know, back in the day games were hard, but they were all platformers for the most part. So it was like strategy and it was hand-eye coordination. And just through practice, you could do it. But these, it's like if you don't grind and you don't spend like X number of hours doing these mundane, like fighting minions, then there is no tactic. It's just, you are not strong enough. It's it's kind of like, uh, I don't know. There are like, last night I was playing this game and I got to like the final chapter in this character's storyline in Octopath Traveler. And um, this boss is this giant monster. There's four people in my team. And like the suggested level that you should be at in order to attempt this boss is level 45. Three out of four of my characters are over the level 60. Okay. And one of my characters is at like 47. So I'm like, I'm good. I can do it. Yeah. This thing killed me in two turns every time every time and so I was like you know I had to look up you know because I'm not you know I do everything that I can if it's if it's too frustrating I'll look online for like some tips or some oh, no, yeah and I had to change yeah and I, I had to like change some things around and I was able to to beat this boss but it took me like four hours <laughs> to finally destroy it and in my head I'm like and I've spent you know, there are days where, like, when I go to play the game, I spend, like, an hour in, like, a desert, which another thing with grinding is most of the time in these RPGs, like, a battle comes out of nowhere. Hmm. It's just all of a sudden, it's like... Yeah, the random battles. And you're in, in this stuff. battle. Random, random battles are, like... I don't think I've ever not been annoyed by them. Even, even, if, even if, like, my whole point in that gaming session is to... I need to level up my character. It's still this the surprise of it is irritating. Yeah. Like I'm trying, like I see something in the distance and I'm walking towards it and I get interrupted like three times. I'm like, are you kidding me? <laughs> like this is the most annoying thing. Like uh so I mean honestly, like there's gotta be a better way to do it, to make it more pleasant. Like nobody wants to be surprised. Can you imagine like if it were like real life and you're on your way to work, every <laughs> 10 seconds you got surprised by something, I would, this is awful. I, I, nobody enjoys doing that. I would, be, I would be interested to see if somebody's like, oh my God, I just really, really love the random battles in video games. I don't think that such a thing exists. I think people see them as a no. necessary, but sometimes right. they're leveling up, but certainly not a, oh, I can't wait to try and get to one side of the world map while having to do battle after battle after battle. That, as you say, tends to almost be like a jump scare sometimes, where it's just doosh. Oh my God, yeah. <laughs> it's a horrible, I hate it. Nobody wants that. It's like growing up, like not to go into detail, but like, you know, a lot of us have issues with our fathers, so I won't go into that. But my dad thought it was always funny to, to, to scare us growing up. Like he thought it was hilarious. I would be driving, we'd be riding in the car, I'd be sitting in the passenger seat, and he would scream at the top of his lungs and like hit me in the chest to wait if he saw me falling asleep to scare me awake almost as though we were getting in a car accident because he thought it was funny he thought mm. it was hilarious so now when i'm playing a video game and something jumps out at me it just makes me mad it makes me angry <laughs> so i'm like and there are plenty of like you know leveling up is fine i have no problems with like having to level up or something but like Make it so that you do it on your way or when you're following the path. So, like, if you win these battles, by the time you get to the end, you're good to go. Yeah, because you've earned it. Yeah. You're good to go. You, you don't need to, like, backtrack and, like, be surprised for 45 minutes and have, like, a giant ant destroy your whole team for some reason. Mm. It just doesn't seem – I don't know. So that can go into the, the old pit, in my opinion. I feel like you did two and one. You have the grinding as one, but you've also got the random battle right. as another. Yeah, that, that's true. Yeah. You want to put both in? It's like, I think grinding is... Yeah, I mean, maybe. Maybe both need to go in. Because I feel like grinding usually coexists with the it random is. battles. 
Because otherwise, if if you're not if you don't have to grind, then you're usually leveling up, but you're fighting stuff you can see. Mm. You know, it's like even in the newest Spider-Man game, like you level up, but you choose battles and you you see them and you opt to go fight them and you're you know where you're going. But this is like you're surprised every time, and sometimes it's something crazy that kills you. <laughs> Brilliant. Excellent. That's, that's how I feel. <laughs> so you released a new EP, Slap Bang yeah. in the middle of the pandemic called The Machineries of Joy. I gotta ask, considering the timing of yeah. release, was it a measured decision to release it when you did, or was it just, well, we're going to anyway, and you never considered a delay? Uh, I forget exactly what I feel like there were some criteria I'm trying to think now that was like I couldn't push it back there was right. something I had done there was something that I had done where it was like the dates were set I don't know if it was just the digital releases where because you know we're independent we're doing it ourselves like you know we, we go through like a third party to get into like Spotify and oh, yeah. iTunes and all that stuff so so it was like at that point you, we couldn't hit the brakes it was coming regardless mm. um, I mean which is a bummer because you know it was like I know while uh, most of us you know lost our jobs and all this stuff it was like we had that we had a record release show we had to cancel we had some other shows lined up that we had to cancel yeah, um, yeah it was uh, at least you got the was, out I mean yeah right right you can say yeah, about otherwise, and all that, but ultimately there's a kind of a catch-22. You lose a lot with it, but you've also got this opportunity potentially where so many people are now at home and potentially may have more free time right. to listen to the music. Yeah, totally. So it works out and like, you know, we're we're all happy with it. So, um, you know, we, we spent a lot of time working on it. And so we um, ha just happy to have it out and move on to other stuff. And, you know, it's... Uh, so it's frustrating because everything got put on hold. Yeah. So. Well, now the yeah. dust has settled a bit, um, it's been out since May. How have you found the reaction to it from uh, fans on online and stuff like that? Uh, the response has been really positive for the most part. It's, yeah. um, it's uh, you know, it's, it's tricky because I've been, you know, kind of doing this sort of stuff since I was a kid. Mm. And every time I kind of like, I think one of my problems is I always, I, uh, there are so many things that I enjoy and so many things that I like, and it's hard to pick just one influence or one inspiration. So I, 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 I want to do it all. <laughs> um, and so like the, one of the problems that we have had is like, we don't fit too comfortably in like the world of like purest punk rock music or you know we don't fit too comfortably in the world of like americana in regards to like you know having like more folky songs or something like that so it's a weird thing because a lot i feel like a lot of bands um they focus on one sound at the beginning and they get really good at that and then they start to really branch out Experiment, yeah. i mean even like yeah like i mean the clash started you know in that just like very strictly like punk mm. sound with like a little bit of reggae every now and then coming in and um and then they branched out and got super weird you know like sandinista is like 36 tracks that spans like seven genres or something yeah. and like i love it like i didn't love it when i was in high school when i was in high school i thought it was stupid because i just wanted the punk stuff but now it's like now I think like that's pretty cool, and like there's also like very few things as you know quote unquote punk as doing whatever you want to do exactly. So, but yeah, I mean the response has been pretty good so far, and and we're happy with it, which is the the main thing, I guess. So the most important thing. Okay, your second nomination yeah. then. What are you thinking about? Where are you looking to go for this time? You've got a wide array of things that grind your gears, no doubt. Yeah, I mean, I was thinking about this too, and in, in terms of like the, the world of heavy metal stuff, like I'm mm. pretty, 
it's funny because I'm pretty open uh, musically. Like somebody suggests something to me, like I'll listen to it. And if I don't like it at first, I'll sometimes like I'll buy the record and then I'll just sort of like sometimes I'll buy the record without listening to it first mm -hmm. and I'll just sit in front of it. And if I don't like it, I'll just keep flipping the record. And then after like a certain number of plays, I can decide whether or not like, nah, I just don't really like it. Or, you know, when I was younger, I would get really like adamant about what I hated or things like that. And now I usually, there's usually a disclaimer where it'll be like, ah, I don't really like that right now. That being said, there is that possibility that in, you know, six months, I could tell you I love it. So yeah. like, um, as far as metal goes, like when I was, uh, you know, I got into like metalcore and stuff when I was, you know, maybe early 2000s and like melodic hardcore and metalcore and, and more recently more like classic stuff like Metallica and things like mm. that and like Mastodon and, uh, and I had friends that were like in a lot of like quote unquote metal bands years ago and um, the one sound that I can't I think it sounds terrible and like you may totally disagree which is fine it's totally fine and I can't get into it is the um in grindcore the the drumming the, like when it gets so fast and chaotic that it no longer really it doesn't really sound like much of anything anymore it's just like when it goes into the hey yeah, yeah, I can it's hear just it. like and it's just like that doesn't it's it sounds like somebody's like running down a flight of stairs really fast or something or like it's like you can't groove to it you can't tap your foot to it you can't like it's not like a breakdown where there could be a pit it's it's literally just chaos which like in small doses sure like you know i could see a little bit like there's this cool melodic, like I guess m metal type band that I've discovered recently through a friend mm -hmm. called Astronoid. Um, and they're super cool because they play really heavy, but it's also really pretty and it's, it's clean vocals. And every once in a while they'll do a drum beat like that. And I still like, I still, when I hear it, I'm like, I see what you're doing, sort of, but it's not like, it doesn't necessarily sound good. It just yeah. sounds like, look at how fast we can play. <laughs> like, okay, well, I mean, I feel like for me, like that, you know, West Coast pop punk fast stuff is as fast as like, that's as fast as I need it to be. You know, it's like that skate punk style is really fast, but so that whole sound, I I could just I don't need that for anything. I can go away. I, I won't live miss without it. it. <laughs> I could I could li I could live without that. Like there's plenty of other stuff. And you know, like I said, maybe maybe in like a a year or two, I'll be like, no, that's really cool. But I doubt it. I, yeah. I, don't, I don't think that that's. Uh... It's like there's this band called uh, Symphony in Peril years ago. Um, and like really really heavy like a lot of dissonant chaotic time signatures and just weird stuff and i remember like not enjoying it at all when i first heard it um and uh <laughs> she's uh i need to throw stuff for her uh but I, I kept listening to it and after a while it was like I got into it and then I was like I love this. this is so cool it's so cool whatever and maybe I just haven't spent enough time with Grindcore but I don't know it doesn't really sound too Grind, Grindcore too is such an acquired taste you know there was a time when yeah. it might hit your mood and it's perfect but uh, I'm a fan right. but even I can only take so much and the fact that you were able to say the drums and my mind instantly heard exactly what you're talking about. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, it's very specific sounds. Absolutely. So what's been kind of keeping you busy during the pandemic, during the last couple of months? Uh, 
I've really I've been um I've been working on a novel. Yeah. Um yeah, it's something that I did like maybe a decade ago. I I I, I did it a couple times and they're both garbage. Okay. Um but you know, I had an idea in my head for a while. Uh and this was like the time where I could I could get up, make myself some coffee and sit down and work on it every day. So I was able to finish like a first draft and now I'm I'm um chipping away at a second draft. Um, so that I, I've been working on that and then um, I've been painting a lot which is also something that I hadn't done in like uh, 10 years or so um, so like that's been occupying my days for the most part you know at the at the start of this I was playing a bunch of guitar but I haven't it's hard I don't know it's hard to not be able to play music with my friends and to so I think the music for right now is kind of on a pause with everything else and I'm focusing on those couple things and then when it's safe uh you know we'll get back together and start writing and rehearsing again but yeah just writing and painting and stuff and having a puppy is <laughs> occupied this time so it's fantastic to hear you have so many outlets for your creativity do you feel yeah. pressure though from fans of the band to be doing something during the downtime. There's been this expectation that, hey, bands, mm -hmm. you're not out playing live, so you must be at home writing music and getting loads of stuff ready to come out. And it seems like right. it's quite pressure filled. Have you had any of that? Oh, yeah. Mm. Yeah, I mean, at the beginning, like that's all I was doing, and which is which is strange to think like, at the beginning of all this, um, at the beginning of all this, it was like everybody and everybody I knew was doing like uh, live streams, like playing songs on their Instagram stories, and like, yeah, I, I mean, and we did a lot of that stuff. And um, I think I wrote, I wrote like maybe three, two or three new songs at the beginning, like in the within the first month. And I was like, you know, chipping away every day, like rehearsing and and. Uh, and we had also had another um, date booked to go into the recording studio because we had, before the pandemic, we had been recording. Mm. Um, so, but as time went on, it was like, well, we still can't do anything. So, I don't know. There's definitely that pressure. Like I, you know, it, it is like, I am, I am grateful that I have these other things that I can do. Yeah. Um, that I enjoy, that I'm passionate about. But at the same time, when I'm not doing one of them, that thing, it, I feel pressure and it's nagging me in the back of my mind. Like in my head, it's like I bought some guitar strings, I got to restring a couple of my guitars um, and start playing. And in the back of my mind, I'm like, I know I'm kind of gearing up to do it. Yeah. I'm, I'm mentally getting ready to do it because like, the novel is coming to a place where like it's not going to take up as much of my time anymore um i'm going to keep painting for a while because like i've had some some interest in some uh some commissions so awesome. it's helping me with like a little bit of money um but it's still that pressure is like it's a serious thing my brother who's in the band and plays like synthesizers he also does his own electronic music and um I know he's talked about that a lot too, just feeling like this pressure, like he should be doing this and making more music, um, but he's just, there's so much going on emotionally and mentally, like even though, you know, we've got so much time, it's a lot to process what's yeah, going yeah. on. So it's not always easy to like hunker down and get a lot of stuff done. Yeah. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, yeah, I mean, I hundred percent agree. I, I hate. We ask that question to basically everyone we speak to during this period for the last. Yeah. Years. We would try. We've been trying to gauge what, how people are, and it seems like fans are forgetting one important element. You're human. You are a human being with yeah. feelings and thoughts right. and all that, and that's quite an important aspect. I think people need to remember that if I'm affected yeah. and I'm just me. <laughs> the person I admire, right. the person I want to write the music, are going to be affected too. Right, yeah. Well, that's a thing too, is like, you know, we think about, I guess, I don't know if it's positive or negative, but like you think about um, 
social media and how it's affected uh, musicians. And, mm. you know, years ago, you would think about your favorite bands or your your favorite artists or actors or whomever it may be. Um, and they would seem as though like distant in some way, like almost like, uh, you know, you put them on this pedestal. But now with everybody posting all this stuff, you're like, oh, you, you do get that um, message that they're human. Yeah. That these are real people so that they no longer feel as special. Um, they no longer feel seem as special, mm -hmm. which is is good in that, you know, as a kid, I, I had such, you know, these massive dreams and like, you know, I worshiped all these bands that I, that I loved. And um, it's kind of a breath of fresh air to be like, you know what, like, it's okay um, to not be perfect, to, to not be like the greatest, whatever, which is like, I don't know if it's, it's, I feel like in some way it's probably similar around the world in terms of like this um, need to do better, to make more money. I know that, that it's a big thing in America. It's one of the worst possible things about it is the whole like concept of the American dream yeah. um, to, to succeed and to, to do more. And I, 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 I hate, hate it. And um this pandemic thing, as horrible as it is, it's sort of like leveled that playing field for a lot of people. So, well put. That's uh, which I think is. Brilliant. Yeah, I think it's uh, alarming, but ultimately, maybe it can be good for everybody in the end, sort of in some way. Fantastic. All right, your third nomination. Then, what, what are you going to be looking at this time? Where are you going? Um. So I have, I have, let me see, what did I do? Oh, I think I made a list and I think that I had the, oh, right, right, right. Oh, I see what I was thinking. Uh, this is a one that I feel like doesn't, um, it's just a, a, a um, like a taste thing. Okay. Like I, like as far as horror goes with movies, like I'm a, a massive Stephen King fan um, and I love like uh, supernatural horror. Like I love like the Conjuring movies and like anything like that. I'm I'm fascinated by and I and I um I love them. Like I will always go see those movies. Cool. Um, the one genre, well, you know, like while I said earlier, like I don't love, I don't care for slasher films. I don't think that, I think some of them are great. You know, I think that some are, you know, have, they're not without merit at all. However, there's that like weird torture porn type horror. Yep. Where it's like, I remember I worked at a movie theater in college and um, I worked at a movie theater in college and what was that was movie like called Hostel? Hostel. That Hostel movie came out. And I never saw it, but I would have to go in and clean the theaters during like the, the closing credits. And sometimes I would watch like the last 10, 15 minutes or something. So the only thing I saw in Hostel was a woman walking out onto a subway track and her eyeball was hanging out of her head. And she's just standing on a platform and people are looking at her like, what the hell is wrong with this lady? And her eyeball is hanging out. And then she walks in front of a train and is just obliterated. Jeez. And I was just kind of like, I was like, I saw that and I was like, I can't. Like, I just, I don't, I, I, I don't, it's just not interesting to me. And it's like the um, Saw movies, like where I know somebody spoiled the first Saw movie. And I think James Wan is great. Like, I think he's incredible. And so, like, I know the story of the first Saw, and I know the twist, which I think is very cool. Yeah. So I can, I can understand. I can understand being, like, a massive fan of that. Um, but the need to have, like, a hundred sequels, and I've seen bits and pieces of them where it's like, you're just, you're just finding more creative ways to pull people apart. Yes. And it's no, it's no longer about, like, a story or like 
suspense. It's just, what can we do to make people uncomfortable? Mm -hmm. And um, so that genre, that sub-genre, I could totally do without. And that being said, I don't think that violence or gore in horror is is unnecessary at all. I think stories can call for that, and it's it's necessary to illustrate at times to um, add weight to the story or to shock. There's nothing wrong with being shocked, but like that whole. It's like I had a, a manager had a, I worked at this wine bar. And he would be like, "Oh, you have to." What was it? Was it? Um, it was a Rob Zombie movie. I forget which one it was. House of a Thousand Corpses. Uh, it, yeah, it might, it might have been that one. That was reading. And he was like, "You have to watch it." One of those. Yeah, I, it could have been Devil's Rejects. I don't know. But he was like, "You have to watch it if you love if you love horror." And also, you have to see it. And I was like, "I just I don't know." I I was like, I just know that it's it's one of those movies that's like. You know, it's it's another one of those. It's based around like, you know, mass murders and violence. And if I'm gonna watch something that has to do with like a mass murderer or violence, I'd prefer to see it told from the perspective of either the detectives or the um, protagonist, as opposed to focusing on or centering on the violence mm -hmm. that's just that's just me and uh, he bugged me to watch it for like months and months and months and I got some friends to do it and I was like alright let's just watch this movie so that he'll leave me alone about it whatever and turned it on and I fell asleep in the first 10 minutes so, so I never saw I never saw it um, but I just like that stuff doesn't excite me I I just it kind of I just find it upsetting mm -hmm. more than anything. It's funny so it's, that it's a great nomination. Uh, it's funny you would bring torture porn up. Is my I love all horror. Um, I will put up with mm. But if there's one style of horror right. I despise the most for just purely for what you said, let's come up yeah. with inventive ways to torture and destroy people's bodies. Torture porn. Right. And that yeah. to me can get in the bin. It's utterly, utterly. That's 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 not entertainment in my view. No, I feel like you know this is. I don't want to offend anybody, but it's kind of like whenever people love that, I can't help but think like, what is the matter with you? Like there has to be something wrong with you. It's one thing like I can understand like I have close friends who are massive you know fans of Rob Zombie movies mm -hmm. and like I can understand like they've they've talked to me about them and I can get I can get it I don't think that that's um, something that needs to be like totally dismissed I understand of it course. there's a there's a difference there's a difference between the two but I'm just like I remember working at the same movie theater and I think Saw Five came out or Saw Six or whatever it was. And the theater was a massive theater, and it was empty. And this woman co comes out of one of the hallways, and I was working in the box office. She comes out of one of the hallways, and she has two little girls with her, um, and one of them is in tears, hysterically crying, really upset. The other girl is just kind of like holding her mom's hand, not showing any emotion whatsoever. And this woman is on the phone, and she's like, can you please come get her? Can you just come get her? Because she's crying and I'm missing the movie. And and just like giving this girl a hard time. And this girl, I mean, in my memory, these girls were probably like 10 or 11. Uh. At most, at most, they were little. And they had walked out of like Saw 5. And what had happened was she had taken her daughter and her daughter's friend to see this movie. And her daughter's friend very clearly did not want to go see a Saw movie. Yeah. And I just remember being like, why would you bring, you know, if you want to have your kids watch that, like, that's, you know, that's fine, I guess. That's your own decision. But, like, you really want to put somebody else's daughter in front of a bunch of people being pulled to shreds? Like, that yeah. seems like a very disturbing thing to do. Oh my goodness me. Well, it's a good one to put in. So, 
you already mentioned social media. What, how well equipped do you think Sean Nolan and the Heartmakers are as a band to exist in the modern times? Now, I don't know your age, but I'm gauging that we're roughly the same age. Um, so we've both probably grown up, or at least our later years in the social media world, the desire and need right. to connect constantly, constant output and so on. Does that come easy yeah. for you guys? Absolutely not. <laughs> not at all. I, I, I um, again, with like the pressure, there's so much pressure to, to like put out content and like try to navigate how you're using social media and like, I feel like for a brief period of time, I was like, okay, so maybe if I use like the right hashtags and they say to, to post between like, you know, these two times during the day or something in order to get the most people. And it's like, at first I was like trying to do it and okay, if this is what I have to do, then this is what I have to do. Um, and at a certain point, I think somewhere in like the last year has like fairly recently, I don't want to say gave up because that's, you know, negative. I, it's not like I gave up on the whole thing. Like I will post things. I will share things on social media. Uh, I will do what I feel is my responsibility. Like, you know, whether it be like an interview or say like a write up on something or like, you know, we have a new photograph or a single, of course, I'm going to post it everywhere. I'm going to do all that stuff. and. Um, but honestly, like, it's such an interesting period of time because on one hand, it's great for, uh, artists and bands and things like that, because you immediately have a platform, mm. you know, if you've got like 30 bucks, you can have your song available around the world. Um, at the same time, it's a negative because of the same exact reason it it's a negative because anybody can be there so what we have now is we have uh, an industry and a platform that's overwhelmed and congested with so much stuff that it's virtually impossible to navigate unless you have things like recommended by somebody else yep. to you like you know i i um i was in a record store like last week and they were playing this music over the over the the system, and I was like, "Oh, this is really cool." It's kind of weird, and they always play records throughout the day, and they'll have it on display somewhere. What yeah. it is they're playing, and it was like I think they're Scott. There's some weird like Scottish dance duo or whatever, and it's just like super weird vibe. And I bought the record, but it was because I like I heard it, and it's it's essentially somebody suggested it to me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, because this one one guy put it on. But, like, I don't really... You know, it's... it's. I don't know if... You know, I get ads constantly for, like, um, purchase, like, real plays on Spotify, and it's not a hoax, and it's not a scam, and obviously it's, it's none of it's realistic. Of course. It's like they're kind of playing with the algorithms and creating phony playlists like all sorts of weird things to get your numbers up yep. um and in my head like it's just i don't know it's it's disturbing it's really lousy um it's like i think dave Grohl said something in the last few years or so dave Grohl said there's some quote by him that said something I'm like listen like all we did was we had it we were in the garage and we played and like we played out and you know because we're good like people will come so like at the end of the day if you're talented and you can put on a good show like all you have to do to make it in this industry is to play out and if you're good someone will hear you inevitably and me and the rest of my friends and anybody that's so is like wrong that's not that's not the world that we live in anymore it, it just doesn't exist that way yep um, so I don't know I'm very overwhelmed by all that stuff and I feel like I'm more and more taking a backseat to it It's the, if you're feeling overwhelmed by it it's the right thing to do there are so many platforms that it'll turn into yeah. just rubbish and people will notice and you'll get called out on it anyway yeah 
it's just like, ah, I don't know. I, I am tired of it. You know, at this point, it's kind of like, you know, we were, we're going to, you know, I'm always going to be writing and we're going to make a record. Like, yeah. that's the thing that's going to happen. It's just something that I've always done. I find it exciting. There's no better feeling than, than you know, being, you know, finishing a record or making music with your friends. Like, in my opinion, is my favorite thing to do. Mm. Um, and, you know, hopefully, like, you know, if some success comes from it, that's great. If not, that's okay. Like, I'm not going to quit because of it because like it's it's a uh, it's important to me so that's it Perfect. the hustle is exhausting you know the hustle is too much you're doing it for you there's no better reason as you say any success that comes from you doing what you love is just a bonus yeah because you're having a good time already you know it's uh you know it's all you can do really do what do what makes you feel good um as long as you're not hurting yourself or anybody um and you know like anything else you just let it happen you know and obviously like it's it's a fine line because you know you it's also important if you do want to succeed it's also important to you know do some research to figure out like which avenues to take and you know you do your due diligence or whatever and then and then whatever happens happens sort of Awesome. Come on, so, yeah. Right, fourth nomination then. We're almost there. What's your next choice? Uh, so, let me see. So I put, this is something that's in almost every genre of horror, which is the jump scare. <laughs> I know we've touched on that. We've touched on that with the, with the random battles and RPGs, but man, it's it's one of those things where a, a true jump scare i feel like is unwarranted mm -hmm. it doesn't make any sense if something is startling that's different than a jump scare oh, yeah. or if something makes you if something makes you jump i don't really consider that a jump scare either i uh because a jump scare is almost like a specific type of scare mm. like there was some, what was this movie called it was some movie I saw uh, it was pretty big I think it had a sequel and the whole point of it was this guy man I can't even remember what the actor's name was he's like a famous actor um, he finds like a box of old tapes or something in his attic and on the tape, he would see somebody get murdered or something like that. Ethan Hawke. Ethan Hawke, yeah, Ethan Hawke. Oh, um, fuck, what's that movie called? I know what you mean, I've seen it. Yeah, and yeah, and it was it was one of those titles that is easily confused with the titles of like a hundred other horror movies. Idiots and stuff like that, yeah. Yeah, it was like, but it was the same kind of a title. But I remember I watched that movie, and as I was watching it, like, I found issues with like the plot. I, I found like there were some weird holes there, but that wasn't the thing that bothered me more than anything. The thing that bothered me the most was at the end of that movie, the very end of that movie, I forget if it's him or like one of his kids or somebody, they go over to the box again, at the very end, they go over to the box and he's like opening it up and looking at it, whatever. And then whatever puppet or um, whatever the villain looked like or the devil or whatever it was literally comes out from outside the camera in front of the camera to make you jump at the end. And my head was like, that didn't even come from anywhere. It didn't come from the box. It wasn't hiding around the corner. You literally kind of broke that fourth wall there for a second and all of a sudden it was like you're scaring us at home with this thing that's jumping it was like it was just like a prank it was like a jack-in-the-box yeah but it had no connection to the actual story mm -hmm. they just did it on purpose to startle you it's kind of like one of those youtube videos oh my god i don't know if you remember back in the day people did this constantly it would be like this youtube video and it'd be like grainy footage and it would be like watch closely and you can see there's like uh 
Bigfoot in the woods back there, whatever. And you're watching and it would be like a minute and a half or maybe like three minutes long. And so by that point, you're like really intent. You're at, you're close at the screen, whatever. And then all of a sudden it would be like some horrible scream sound and like a cartoon bear would jump in front of the thing or whatever, just to make you jump. And I don't think it's ever funny really it's kind of like you laugh after but it's more of like nervous laughter and then you're mad you're like why would you make me watch that yep. or like so I don't know that's the thing I loved about like The Conjuring um, and even like movies like The Shining obviously you know most people who are fans of the genre love The Shining and it's just the atmosphere and the suspense are absolutely terrifying like it stays with you forever you don't you don't need i always it's kind of like um i don't know jump scares are it's kind of cheap it's like yeah. you can't figure out how to actually scare somebody you're so this is all you got this is what you got it is like really the cheapest top, yeah the cheapest point of horror um the old the tropes whether it's suddenly some your ninja like friend who quietly comes behind you and puts your hand in the shoulder normally followed by a loud screech yeah but you're preaching to the choir. I've just come off the back of watching all six Paranormal Activity movies in in, in one big bulk for- I've never seen them. Uh, <laughs> I mean, uh, it depends how you feel about fan footage. Did I watch them? Um, I'm- I'm okay, with, I'm okay with it. I mean, the first Paranormal Activity is obviously very famous. It's got some great subtle scares, but the problem is they're all, you need, they're all jump scare -athons. They're, that's what their entire right, right, right. jump scares. It's what they're after. Yes, it tries to do it in a more realistic fashion, but six films, by, right. by the time you've got to the third and the fourth one, the fourth one, really, it's a down, it's a downhill, downward spiral, in my opinion. But, you know. Right, right. That's just that, yeah. But yeah, jump scares, I I, I, I consider myself, right? And this is sound like a boast, but it's yeah. meant it this way. I consider myself unscarable when it comes to jump scares. Like, I, I, I right, yeah. making me jump when I watch a horror, ever. So anytime it does get yeah. me though, I end up getting, like you said, right. a little bit mad. I'm like, damn it! Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's cheap, it's like a prank of some that's, sort. That's exactly. Because like, you know, that's like, like I think if something makes you jump, but it, because like in real life, things make you jump, mm. you know, like, um, so if it, if it makes sense you know like even like i think my brother saw one or two of the paranormal activities and he told me about it and stuff that he would tell me about it seemed cool yeah. like the way they did it seemed cool and i think when when it makes sense logically like in real life if you were to see something that would make you jump yes. like you know for example like if like a uh like a pots and pans fell off the wall or something like i would jump at that um so i think there there's a fine line i think it's like the when it's cheap and you know that it's cheap because there are times where it's like i jump in a movie and i'm like oh my god like that's horrifying or like you know they did it really because i think what was it um did you see Haunting of Hill House on Netflix. The show, no, I didn't watch that. Other people for the site yeah. did told me it was quite good. Yeah, I I really, really enjoyed that a lot. Like it I like the director. Um and there was like one point I think in each episode that would make me jump. Hmm. But it was done really well. It was done really well, um, to where I wasn't like, oh that was a cheap shot and I'm angry about it. It was more like Bravo, you got me, you know, and it was like, it made sense. And I was a big fan of it. So, which is like, that makes it tricky then because it's like, I, I don't think, you know, jumping because you're scared should go in the dead pit. I think like the cheap jump cheap, scares. Cheap jump scares. The, the ones where you're like, cheap jump scares. Yeah. Yeah, those, those can. No, it's brilliant. I love it. Cheap jump yeah. scares is perfect. Easy to hey. do. Right. Last question for you then before the final nomination. Yeah. The future. Um, I know it's very, very difficult uh, to be planning or even thinking about it, but do you have any plans, Sean Nolan and the Heartmakers, oh, say in the next 12 months? 
Yeah, I mean, right now, um, you know, like I said, we had we had um, started recording new tracks uh, yeah. maybe like a month before the, the pandemic. Um, and, you know, we had a date set to go in to record the next three. And really excited about it because the the sound the sound is a little bit different this time. I mean, it's still. Um, I think the biggest thing is that we've kind of maintained. It feels more. Um, they all feel more connected, so the sound kind of runs through it all, okay. in a way. Um, but our drummer moved across the country to uh, California, oh, so wow. he. Um, you know, ideally, we want to have him fly back to be able to record with us. You know, if that's what we can do, then we'll do it. Yeah. Um, but if we can't, it means we have to find somebody to play the drums, um, which, you know, is always a headache, but it's not, like, going to deter us from doing it. So the plan right now is, um, you know, as soon as it's – because right, the problem right now that we have is that we don't have a place to run rehearse right. because all of the spaces that we would go to are closed um so as soon as we can you know we're going to be writing the other parts for the songs like we need to write some more guitar and synthesizers and stuff and um tighten that stuff up so, so that stuff up so when we have a drummer we can just kind of like get them up to speed and then record because that's what i really want to do more than anything so within the next 12 months the plan is to work on this record so it's a very very feasible um, and fair and straightforward plan right last yeah question. so hopefully hopefully yeah watch this space as well last the uh, right yeah go on then last hey. one last nomination okay last nomination oh this is a weird thing with back to the video game thing this is something that bothers me is like punishing deaths okay where it's kind of like where it's kind of like not only did you lose but we're gonna send you way back over there and then you're gonna lose all of your gear all of your equipment everything that you've done this thus far because you you weren't quite prepared enough <laughs> we're gonna make it really hurt and the thing is is like i've experienced that in a number of games where you're like are you kidding me like are you telling me that i have to go all the way back there now like especially when you're come when you come close to beating a boss or something you get so close and then instead of just dying and respawning you get sent back mm -hmm. And I don't understand, I don't understand why these developers feel the need to make it worse. Especially like when it's like, you know, they, they uh, you know, most games now are like, there's an auto save feature. Yeah. But like some games still don't. Some games you still, you have to find a spot to save. Mm -hmm. And it's not necessarily as close to where the boss is as you want it to be. So when you die, you have to go all the way back. And in my head, like, there are some newer games. Like, even um, there's a platformer that I really love uh, called Celeste. Um, super challenging platformer. But, and when you die, it's cool because it's almost like Mega Man. You kind of burst like like you do in Mega, the old Mega Man games. Yep. Um, but you respawn so quickly. Yep. And it's like, you, you can die. Like, they keep track of how often you die. And they're like, I died 400 times in that huh. level. But it doesn't feel like it. And it keeps you playing. It keeps you playing because, like, it's quick. Whereas, like, when a death is so bad, when you spend so much time doing something, and then you lose, and then you have to go back, the number of times where I've been like, forget it. Yep. Forget it. I'm not doing that. I'm, I'm just not going to do it. Sorry. And so, like, I just don't understand why why would they think that that's a good idea developing the game it's funny because you get this constant it doesn't make you want to play more yeah, you get this constant stew nowadays of where developers are like yeah our game's old school and when you die you go back to like the start of the level or you have to start it like like in the old days you play ghosts and goblins have three lives die right yeah and um start at the beginning 
yeah. with modern technology, you don't really need to. I mean, I love that you brought up Celeste. I know the game too. No. And it's all about high powered speed. Yeah. Yeah, totally. It's yeah. like, I think uh, I beat, I never beat Mega Man before. And I think like a, a few years ago, they added um, a, uh, what, what do they call it? Now, the newest one has a rewind feature, which is cool. So you die and you go back because those games are so difficult. Yeah. Um, and they also added like a, on the 3DS, you could save, you could create save points. Yeah. No matter I was like, that makes so much sense because now I can actually, in theory, I can beat it. Whereas before, you know, like you said, like all games, you start at the beginning, you lose all your progress. Yeah, there's no reason. There's no reason for that anymore. It's not fun. Especially, like, you know, the older you get, it's like, I don't have time for this. I'll I'll take it over. I'll take it in a Dark Souls fan, then. Uh, you know, I've only... I've heard about it, but I've, I haven't played it because of what I've heard about it. Obviously famous, right, for that exact reason. Good game. Famous for being, like... Yeah, I mean, I would give I would give it a shot, but I'd have to be like emotionally prepared <laughs> to die constantly. Yeah, fantastic! I love it. Rough deaths is perfect one to end. Sean, thank Rough you deaths. so much oh, for this. Yeah. I really appreciate it, your time. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, it's been great. Thank you very much for watching. You can check us out on gbhbell.com as well as on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and Tumblr. Go to Patreon to help us out over there, that's patreon.com forward slash gbhbl, as well as Big Cartel where you can find some of our merchandise. We have a podcast running on SoundCloud and Apple Podcasts, and of course, if you like this video, do us a favour, hit the subscribe button and help the channel grow. Games, horror and heavy metal, what else is life for?